after the fundamental principles, we move on to the fundamental canons contained in the Manual of Professional Practice of Civil Engineers. Welcome back to the program. The first fundamental canon, civil engineers shall hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public and shall strive to comply with the principles of sustainable development in the performance of their professional duties. Similar with the principles, civil engineers should keep human welfare and sustainable development as top priorities. There are different ways to do such a rule. The first way to do this is states, civil engineers shall recognize that the lives, safety, health, and welfare of the general public are dependent upon engineering judgments, decisions, and practices incorporated into structures, machines, products, processes, and devices. The second way to observe Canon 1 is, civil engineers shall approve or seal only those design documents reviewed or prepared by them which are determined to be safe for public health or welfare in conformity with accepted engineering standards. Thinking about it, the moment that a civil engineer places his seal on a document, he has approved the content and whichever consequence that may occur, he is liable so it is a rule that every engineer should only place his signature and seal to documents which he prepared or he reviewed. Letter C Civil engineers whose professional judgment is overruled under circumstances where the safety, health, and welfare of the public are endangered or the principles of sustainable development ignored shall inform their clients or employers of the possible consequences. At times that the engineer's professional opinion has been overruled by others, he should act professionally and still inform the concerned about the possible problems or results that may happen in the project. Moreover, civil engineers who have knowledge or reason to believe that another person or firm may be in violation of any of the provisions of Canon 1 shall present such information to the proper authority in writing and shall cooperate with the proper authority in furnishing such further information or assistance as may be required. Each civil engineer is obliged to report any violation of the Canon to the proper authority and he should do such reporting through writing. If he is summoned to explain or show evidence, he should cooperate in furnishing required information. Another step to uphold Canon 1 is, civil engineers should seek opportunities to be of constructive service in civic affairs and work for the advancement of the safety, health, and well-being of their communities, and the protection of the environment through the practice of sustainable development. Civil engineers should also participate in the development of the community, they can give advice or recommendations to the advancement of human welfare and the environment. They can participate in research or in extension programs. The last detail concerning Canon 1 states, civil engineers should be committed to improving the environment by adherence to the principles of sustainable development so as to enhance the quality of life of the general public. As one of the priorities for the profession, civil engineers shall be drawn to the development of the environment. The second canon dictates, civil engineers shall perform services only in areas of their competence. It discusses limitation of services to areas of expertise only. Detail A states, civil engineers shall undertake to perform engineering assignments only when qualified by education or experience in the technical field of engineering involved. Although one has ample knowledge in civil engineering, there are different fields involved in projects so a responsible engineer should not be a know-it-all and only focus on areas he has knowledge and experience on. The second detail for Canon 2 further explains the previous idea. Civil engineers may accept an assignment requiring education or experience outside of their own fields of competence, provided their services are restricted to those phases of the project in which they are qualified. All other phases of such project shall be performed by qualified associates, consultants, or employees. Project engineers can accept the position of taking over the whole project. 
but he is only to concentrate on areas of his expertise. That means that for a project, he should designate the other professionals such as the mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, or even the sanitary engineers in order to successfully complete the project. Another detail discusses, civil engineers shall not affix their signatures or seals to any civil engineering plan or document dealing with subject matter in which they lack competence by virtue of education or experience, or to any such plan or document not reviewed or prepared under their supervision and control. Signatures and seals should only be limited to competency, so a civil engineer should not sign or place his seal on the documents to be signed by the other professionals. The last detail supporting Tanen 2 is, civil engineers shall not use the specialty engineering titles such as structural engineer, transportation engineer, water engineer, geotechnical engineer, construction engineer, and the others without the PICE specialist accreditation. PICE has a specialist accreditation board for those who opt to acquire another title and license as specialty engineers. Without proper accreditation, civil engineers should not be advertising themselves as structural engineers or other specialty titles. Canon 3 is similar with the second fundamental principle. Civil engineers shall issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner. For the first detail, Civil engineers should endeavor to extend the public knowledge of civil engineering and sustainable development and shall not participate in the dissemination of untrue, unfair, or exaggerated statements regarding civil engineering. When reaching the public with knowledge or services, civil engineers shall be honest and objective. They should not be spreading false information. The second detail focuses on reports or testimonies. It states, civil engineers shall be objective and truthful in professional reports, statements, or testimony. They shall include all relevant and pertinent information in such reports, statements, or testimony. Similar with the previously discussed detail, civil engineers should be objective and honest when reporting. There is a specific detail when engineers are expert witnesses. The detail states, Civil engineers, when serving as expert witnesses, shall express civil engineering opinion only when it is founded upon adequate knowledge of the facts, upon a background of technical competence, and upon honest conviction. Adequate information should support a civil engineer's opinion, especially as expert witness in court proceedings. Detail D is all about relationships with other professionals. Civil engineers shall issue no statements, criticisms, or arguments on civil engineering matters which are inspired or paid for by interested parties, unless they indicate on whose behalf the statements are made. The last detail for Canon 3 is all about the civil engineer staying modest with his dealings despite his achievements. Civil engineers shall be dignified and modest in explaining their work and merit and will avoid any act tending to promote their own interests at expense of the integrity, honor, and dignity of the civil engineering profession and or related professions.